Um, let's see. Okay. So it seems we are now recording. Um, so I think we can start. So it's actually five past um, seven. Um, and basically, I just want to start, like always, by saying thank you very much for all the time and effort all of you put into this project and for making time for this call. <clears throat> it's been, I've been telling people about this project and every time I tell them, I tell them a little bit still surprised on how well I think everything worked. Of course, there were some problems with the time spam and some things got stuck in customs for some groups. Some things didn't arrive in time and everything, but all in all, considering that we had eight weeks and we got from nothing to something that is fairly well documented and, and fairly working, I think that's very good. And I think, of course, we can from here only go up and improve. So thank you all for having already set the bar quite high for the next time we do something like this. And the purpose of this call is actually for you. We've tried to do this during the eight weeks, but if you didn't get a chance to see and talk to each other, maybe do a little bit of that and break the ice a little bit. Um, and also to show a little bit what you've been doing, what kind of problems you've struggled with and, and things like that, right? So that we can think about also writing those down and documenting those a bit. Um, yeah. Does anybody have any comments or anything that they would like to share this time? Nice meeting everyone. I'm really happy to see you today. So I don't actually met. Yeah. So, yeah, so I think this is what, this is a very good point for us to get started. So, Jose, since you already started, would you guys mind your group introducing yourselves and telling us what you've done and share a little bit of what you learned and what you're planning to do next with the project? Yeah, so shall we do it with the slides because we made the slides as well? Ah, sure. Yeah, I mean, by all means, if you have prepared something, of course. We can share a screen, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, we are actually three, but turn into four, and some touch is not here, but that was a, uh, it was really nice. Cool. So uh, maybe uh, you know to yeah, I want to share my screen. Yeah. Uh, Yanis and Leila, feel free to jump, but to jump in, but I'm gonna I'm gonna jump to the to the learning first because. I think, and then go to the videos if you don't mind. Mm, no, not at all. So, so what we learned is that, well, it's, it's been really good to do it well because we get to know people, we get to do things, and that is the most important thing, I guess. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we learned that there's a need for the computers simulation and uh, doing things before the building is important. Especially with this kind of equipment, which is very complicated and very uh, safety demanding. The centrifuge are really dangerous. I was not aware of it, which is very nice because if, if I would have thought it too much, then I would have maybe jump into the play with uh, my friends. So uh, we, will we will have selected something different. <laughs> But it is great, it's great because we have learned a lot. Uh, I think it's something for everyone. Uh, time is critical always. It's the most important resource. And the experiments take a lot of time. Two months was a challenge, right? And uh, it implies knowing the problem, but at the same time doing stuff, ordering, which takes time as well. And it should be iterative and uh, that was a, uh, I challenge him to order things that we didn't know what to order. So we had to be fast in deciding and making quick. So that was also a nice training. Uh, uh, we were not able to replicate the model that was open source. So that that is good and bad. It's, uh, it's bad because, well, it's not sufficiently well documented, but it's good because we can contribute and improve. So there is something we can do. So we feel useful <laughs> in the program. There were more projects open source, but this was the one we selected based on its completeness. Completeness, like completeness. yeah. <laughs> apparent, apparent completeness, right? Because you yeah. never know. Uh, and yeah, then maybe quickly I'll jump into a project so that people know what we were doing. So we were 
we were doing the centrifuge and the, this is our, let's say the, the plan that we have, how we approach the project and what, yeah, how it started everything, right? So we, we tried to went to see which open hardware models were out there and see uh, what could be improved based on some research or we make a lab visit. We also make a, a, a survey. But the approach was to, we had already the idea of modeling and understanding the, the physical system, which is something that we didn't have time to do, but we found later uh, that it was very important because someone else did it and it was very helpful to us. So, uh, but we tried because we had little time to uh, select a model and replicate it. And that took a lot of time. It took most of the, <laughs> of the program. So, uh, that was like a, a, a way of bagging up ourselves and not getting risk, and still we haven't managed to finish. So, uh, also because of the delay of the order. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, so only I think two, three weeks uh, they were spending. Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. more time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but we the, it was also interesting to find something to do when you were, when things were coming, and that is where you can combine research with uh, building. So. But we also got some feedback from from uh, users, so that was interesting, and that allowed us to generate uh, some ideas from the start, right? So we we ordered things, we started ordering things, we started research, and we tried to do everything in parallel because otherwise we would lose a lot of time, right? And this is an example of a design exploration that we had because we know that cooling was important. In the first week, we already thought about doing something like a cooling solution. Because yeah, this is yeah. Uh, this is part of the iteration uh, research that we did. We made a survey. Uh, we also arranged a disassembly of a commercial mesh uh, centrifuge. It's very complex uh, device, so you can see. I will share the slides later with, because maybe I'm taking too much time. This yeah. was another iteration that we failed uh, <laughs> because. <laughs> We were, we were not able to, this uh, Arduino Nano was a problem. So that means that the whole circuit is not useful anymore. And we, then, mm. yeah. So that was uh, our experience. And then in the middle of the journey, we found out the calculation in Spanish, which was good. You can actually calculate a model of your centrifuge. And that already tells you what model you need and stuff like that. So that helped us also in selecting new models and stuff. And this was the, the last one, the last iteration where we are now. So I tried to make the circuit. It failed again because of certain uh, uh, assumptions I made that were uh, wrong. And this is the last one that I managed to have uh, working better today. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So uh, I was using an Arduino Uno. So I, I learned also that it's good to go with the standard ones, especially when you are when you are prototyping and uh, yeah, uh, the next steps for, for us is to keep, I think the plan is not bad, it's just a matter of time and uh, fine tuning. Uh, keep uh, working on the cooling because we already have the hardware for to improve the cooling, but we haven't been able to work on it yet because we first want to replicate. And then we, after cooling, we will go if it's feasible to increase in speed because that's more complicated. So yeah, yeah that's uh, that's our learning. You you have to keep going and, and keep the documentation and there yeah, yeah and the documentation also, which is uh, in this format, it's not ready yet. But we have this template, which by the way, the rest of the teams could use if they want. So I can show them how to use it. But yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. yeah. Um, definitely post uh, a, a, this idea on the on the Slack if people want to learn how to use this template no? and yeah, make a yeah, data. Yeah. But that's very cool. I mean, thank you very much. Does anybody, <laughs> yeah, uh, anybody wants to comment or to say something or? Yeah, I personally think it's it's an interesting project, uh, despite the fact that there are challenges uh, that's. I mean, you faced, and uh, I think all other teams are facing. You have been able to move past those stages to actually get something up and running, which is very good to see. So for me, I think that is uh, a very positive learning uh, curve 
on, on the project. Just like you mentioned, you had to learn to uh, re reuse some parts based on the, the things that you were doing. So I think it's, it's a very le good learning experience, which if it's carefully documented would help other people who would uh, want to use your project and, and, and then build it from scratch. So I think that is very interesting and uh, good job. Anybody else? Thanks, Harry, for this contribution. Drew? No. Are you guys going to keep working on the project, or what are you guys' plans going forward? Yeah, we want to keep working, and hopefully people will join as well to make the burden less. Oh, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. So are you interested in joining or being part of it? I like open source and all that stuff, and so... Um, if you need help, I'm more than willing to help. Where are you guys located at? We are in the Netherlands. Where? In the Netherlands. Okay, the Netherlands. Where are you? I'm in the I'm in the United States. All right, that's good. That's, that's me enough on the internet. <laughs> guys, a bit. Um, we are definitely going forward with this, trying to uh, trying to make our plans at least get a faster machine and trying to get the cooling up and also my personal goal is also to make it a bit safer because if we're going to make it move faster we need some safety uh, uh, measures there but but this is not the end for us cool sorry guys I, I i hate to cut it short i would love for you guys to continue this discussion maybe on slack on a public channel that everybody on the centrifuge channel that everybody can also see the reason why i'm cutting is that we need to go to the other groups otherwise you know we could spend a, a good amount of time and then people would have to start leaving and so on so thank you very much again i think it was wonderful i thanks harry and drew for the comments um who wants to go next Okay, so Harry's team will go for a second. Okay. Okay, so um, I'm part, my name is Harry, and uh, I'm part of the team in Ghana, and uh, I work closely together with Evans and uh, Isaac and uh, Aurora. I think they are both on the call. Uh, they'll come in when they are supposed to give updates on the things that they have done. But generally, the team in Ghana, which is based on Kumasi Hive, uh, is building an open source split reader. So what we started off with was to research on existing open plate readers uh, for us to understand uh, how they built their open plate reader. And uh, fortunately for us, we uh, saw one open plate reader that was built. And uh, from there, we uh, I had to brief the team because it was a more diverse team we needed to understand uh, each other and how we are going to effectively uh, build the project at hand. And also realizing that we are coming, out, uh, coming from very diverse backgrounds, especially with our skill set. Uh, myself, who was more into the biology side of things, had to uh, explain the project at hand to the other engineers on the team who were mechanical engineers and electronic engineers, uh, mechanical and uh, electrical electronic engineers who are mostly going to be building <clears throat> and putting to use the idea, especially with biology, regarding the projects we are going to build. For, for us in Ghana, what we wanted our plate reader to do was to perform nucleic acid quantification. So uh, we had had a number of project meetings during the phase, uh, during the project phase. We worked extensively on the codes that were going to drive our plate reader, um, Evans, who was also very instrumental in uh, taking care of the mechanical portions of the uh, open plate reader that we we're building, was uh, doing the 3D modeling, working on the UI uh, interface of the, the whole project. Isaac, who was also responsible for programming the microcontroller uh, and all other software related packages that we're going to use, was equally doing that as part of the project. Aurora came in uh, later to also join the project to help us build. Uh, for us in Ghana, we are also trying as much as possible not only to build the project, but also to use it as a learning opportunity for anyone who was interested to, to learn how to build 
low cost uh, open source uh, equipment. So we had a number of students along the way who had to join us to understand the project and we are using it uh, as a, a learning opportunity for them to also know how some of these projects were being built. So for us, that, that's the entire uh, trajectory. We had some ups and downs uh, with regards to shipments and having things uh, delivered to us. Uh, we were able to identify correctly the parts that we needed to build this project. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, just like the first, I think Jose uh, presented, yes, you, during your research, you realize that existing uh, open source designs, you say for us, we're going to use uh, an LED because we thought that was the right uh, light source that was going to be used in the uh, spectrophotometric analysis for the nucleic acid quantification, but realized that that was not going to uh, give us the needed uh, wavelengths that we're going to use. So we're still troubleshooting. We had frequent uh, calls with Andrea to update him on progress of what we were doing. He was so instrumental in helping us along the way. So basically, that, that is just uh, a summary of the things uh, that have been going on with the team in Ghana. I think we have Evans and Aurora uh, at, within this call. They equally share uh, reflections of how the projects went for us. Just, but just before I end, I think the learning curve for us, for me personally on the project, has been very tremendous because one, it's uh, helped me to work collaboratively with people with diverse uh, skill sets to build uh, a hardware critical for biology, which of course was very expensive in, in our context. So it is something that uh, was very uh, inspiring to me because it, it offered me the opportunity to learn and, and also to, to stay teachable uh, yes, on the project. Then again, I think it would be also good to talk about the, the tra trajectory of the project after the, the end of this. What we seek to do is that in the next couple of uh, weeks, we will try as much as possible to overcome all the customs challenges. We have one good a good in custom supply. Once that is in, which is the electronic portion, we will then go ahead to start with assembly because the software requirements for the project is, is up and running. All that we need to do is to assemble and test. So the next couple of what we'll be doing is to assemble our hardware, uh, our open source uh, photometer or plate reader, and then begin testing it with uh, samples for nucleic acid quantification. So in short, that is about the project. I will leave it to Evans and Aurora to share reflections of, uh, on the project so far. Thank you. Yeah, so, um, thanks, Harry, for the update. Um, Harry, you will talk about most of the projects and what we've been doing. Um, personally, coming through from a mechanical engineering background, it was really hard to see how I was going to make any impact of any sort. So, um, it was, it was, it's been an actually nice experience. And uh, let me quickly share... Um, my screen for um, the, the, the models we worked on. Um, so I used SolidWorks to work on the, um, the, the microplate reader. So this is essentially how it looks like. Um, we managed to get the mechanical, most of the mechanical component in the bars and the motors as well. I'm sorry, not the motors, the frames mostly, and then things like um, this small member here. Um, we managed to get the, those um, on Monday. Um, from customs after it cleared them. But we are still waiting on the electrical components, um, like Harry rightly said, to be cleared from customs. But essentially, this is how we expect the plate reader to look like. Um, it's just, um, it's, it's more or less operates a bit like a 3D printer going to be driven mostly by motors um, with bells as well. I didn't model the bells because they were a bit tedious to do. So I didn't do that. And um, essentially that we have just normal um, 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 police that's going to be driven and will drive most of these mechanisms here. So this mechanism here can move front and back like this. Um, and then we have the plates mounted over here and also moving in and out on these two bearings. So um, that's something I also haven't modeled yet, but hopefully um, we should get started with assembling. Um, hopefully tomorrow, um, we were a bit tight with another pro pro program we we're running. So hopefully now that it's all cleared, we should be able to get started on the the, um, on the assembling of the entire mechanical structure. Uh, personally, it's been a great learning experience because coming into this project, I had very little idea 
biology and I had no idea how I could apply my, my skills into um, biology and biological related hardware like the microplate reader. So this, this particular project has given the opportunity to be able to use my skills in ways that I thought I could never have. So uh, I think uh, this has actually been massive. And regarding the scope of the project uh, going forward, Harry has talked about it most um, extensively and that we intend to keep working on it and keep um, improving it as best as we can. Um, and also make it as cheap as it can so that um, um, labs around here in this part of the world can also get a feel for how to use industry standard machineries like this. Right, thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry. Did okay, I interrupt? It's fine. Oh, no, no, not really. Okay, sorry. So anybody has a pressing question or a comment? And I'm sorry to be speeding things up. It's just that I want that everybody gets a chance to talk and, and talk about their project. And I'm again, as I said, and sorry, just as I said, right, um, all things that are not super pressing on Slack, it would be great to continue this conversation. Yanis, what did you want to say? Sorry. I just want to say it looks like an amazing project. And Athens, well done on the model, mate. That looks, that looks great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Evans. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So who wants to go next? Drew, yeah. Hi, Andrew. We can, yeah, we can go <laughs> next. Or, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, we're, we're from Peru. We have been building a micro -mani manipulator. Um, well, this device, this equipment works for, besides that working for cell handling, it also works for intracytoplasmatic sperm injection. That's a technique used in in vitro fertilization. So, uh, well, our team is diverse. I am a biologist, and we have uh, Jean Pierre that's next to me. He is an electronic engineer, and we also have Anthony, who is a software engineer. But we we when we um, started doing this project, uh, we had the second the in vitro fertilization objective um, as main because I, I, I belong to a um, reproduction, rep reproduction uh, endocrinology and reproduction lab. Well, so jean is going to talk about uh, how we build equipment. I just wanted to say that besides being this uh, tremendous learning experience, uh, it also helped us to to realize how much we can do with local materials we we didn't we didn't have the problem like, like harry had because we tried to use almost everything from peru that we can we could find here so well this is jean pierre who's going to talk about the project yeah i, I am sharing my my screen um, uh, can you see my can you see the screen? Okay, great. Great. Uh, well, uh, initially, uh, I, I'm seeing other uh, open source micro manipulator, but the design is was uh, very different. Uh, I'm trying to use a, in the initial prototype uh, sort of profiles uh, based on other 3D printers. Uh, I was using uh, in this example four profiles for each axis. Um, yeah, uh, in my first advance, I, I was showing this. Uh, Hello? Can Oh, uh, well, uh, uh, I try to use another designs uh, using uh, uh, design your purpose. So an own design. Uh, uh, an own design. So uh, the documentation of the new design is in the building uh, repository. Building repository. So we have a step-by-step -step from this new design based on a three carriage. Uh, I am, I, I don't know if I'm, 
he doesn't know if he's showing it too fast, but uh -huh. you can see here that we, we try to do a step-by-step -step guide. We want to do it both in Spanish and in English, like it's here. Um, and luckily for us, this final, the, this final design, it worked really well. You can see here uh, the final, I'm going to jump to the final. Uh, well, this, this design actually worked quite well. We are in the face of trying to do the, the, the trial with the intracytoplasmatic thing that is going to take, uh, it's attended for next week because we, we need to have rats um, with a certain age. <laughs> and, now, and currently we have very young rats, so we're waiting for them to be in the appropriate age to, to do the experiment. But it's it actually it, it had we the feedback we had in the lab was great um, because even we are, even though we're from a an, a lab and an university that has that's specialized in medicine we don't have and we have a course on undergrad uh, for for this uh, this kind of themes we don't have this machine to do these experiments it's really expensive so to be able to build this this machine and that will probably be used to to for study students undergrad students to to work this uh it's it's really great they really love the design and and the capabilities uh also what uh, what i wanted to say is that we also need a syringe pump andre suggested that since there's a, a team working on syringe pump that we take a look at their repository we we did that and we use we use uh, we use them their design as inspiration. I don't know who's the team <laughs> of the syringe pump, but we did a mini version of their design because actually our needs uh, were not as much as we need. We need we don't need that much sample to to handle. We only need a micro pump. So we use them. Thank you for for your for your design. Uh, and also we we. Uh, what we did next, Anthony, who's a software engineer, also designed an app so we can hand, uh, uh, sort of handle things in another way. That's not necessarily that's not necessarily the the one with the wheels because we also had a three wheel thing to handle the samples. But we can also do it uh, with a with an app. So what we are trying to do, we are working on a draft of a paper. So we want to publish this. Uh, and that's it. That's our 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 project, which I I believe it's 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 been great for me. I'm I'm not used to to do this hardware thing. I am a biologist as, as I said, but I learn a lot. So thank you for the opportunity to learn. Cool. Thank you very much. Um, anybody with comments or pressing questions at the moment? Yes, uh, thanks for the presentation. This is a very wonderful project, but I was quite uh, confused about what exactly this uh, hardware was going to do. Oh, well, the hardware works for uh, cell manipulation uh, and also for this particularly um, technique that I talked about that's uh, intracytoplasmatic sperm injection it, this is a well this is a technique where you take a sperm cell and you inject it into an egg this works for um okay. yeah in vitro fertilization but it also works okay. i talk i talk with uh, some people that work in, in our department that work with this for cell manipulation you know you could tell okay. yeah but it, it was quite that's well probably we we will documented as well the the microscopes that work with this cell thing they they are quite expensive so we the pi of that project uh, didn't want us to 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 use our our equipment with their with their microscope because they're they're doing some project now so they say well when we end up we you can go go around play and and I'll, I'll try that so that would work for okay. so many as well, yeah. Cool. Okay. 
Cool. Uh, thanks a lot. I think this looks wonderful. And it's great that you were also able to use inspiration from another project here to, to uh, put the final stone on yours, right? Yeah. Thanks. Um, so who wants to go next? Drew? I do. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to say thanks. Um, and I'm really interested in everybody's project because I feel like the different things that my lab is doing um, we already want to make the micro manipulator. Um, we want to do some projects with that with some like zebrafish engineering. Um, the guys that did the, the centrifuge, I'm interested in that because I actually need a centrifuge for the second part of my project, which is the bioprinter. And those are really expensive, like you guys are saying. And so if people are wanting to do this open source, they're going to need a centrifuge. Um, and so I'd love to work with you guys because I need a centrifuge that'll do like 50 mil tubes. And so it'd be interesting to try to see if we could scale that up. And that would be what I'm interested in. Um, and so I, uh, my team, mostly me, I did a lot of the, the stuff because this is what I'm interested in. And this project actually helped me realize what I kind of wanted to do with my life. I thought I wanted to go one direction, but I think I want to go another direction. How do you screen share? I can't see how to do it. Anybody? Andre? Sorry, if you bring your mouse to the bottom of the of the Zoom thing, there should be a share. Can you see invite, manage participants? Okay. Oh, sure. Got it. Things like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's share my screen. So here is so we had a two part or a two part project. Um, I really we I really wanted to, and my team wanted to build a bioprinter. Um, because we're interested in bioprinting and open source um, things like that and I've been interested in it for quite a while but in order to do that we needed to make a syringe pump so that we could do that and so Andre wanted us to do the syringe pump and then work on doing a bioprinter and so I come from a 3d printing background um, I love 3d printers and I'm also a biological engineer here in the United States um, and so I wanted to combine the two and so since I've got a 3D printing background, I wanted to use things that are um, readily available and understood by like people who do 3D printers. And since this is going to be integrated into a 3D printer, I wanted the user interface to be the same. And so I built a syringe pump that used um, already existing 3D printer software um, and firmware so that it, would, it wouldn't be much of a jump um, going and using it on a bioprinter. And so here is the syringe pump that I built. Um, it's run on an Arduino, a, a modified Arduino, and it has an LCD screen um, and a stepper motor that it uses. And it can do 60 mil um, syringes. And um, then that can then be integrated into a bioprinter. So right here is a syringe pump hooked up to a desktop DIY 3D printer that was modified with a needle. Um, and so that is what we've been working on lately is trying to get it to work. I've run into a lot of problems trying to get bioprinting to work. Um, and it's more of just the, the chemical aspects of, of how to do it and not the mechanical aspects. Um, and so that's what we're working on now. Um, and that's <clears throat> something that I'm really interested in. There was something else I was going to say, but I don't remember what it was. So there's just a little overview of our project. Very cool. good, very nice. Yeah. Really impressive. <laughs> uh, I have a question. What do you actually mean by bioprinting? So are you familiar with 3D printing? Yeah. yeah. So 3D printing takes plastic and it melts plastic and then it puts it back down and it hardens. Bioprinting is where you take like a gel um, so you can, there's lots of different things you can use. People use gelatin or agarose or sodium alginate. Um, and it's a gel, so it doesn't work the same way as plastic does. You don't want to heat it up and melt it because then it won't solidify again. And so you print it in such a way, let me share my screen again. Yeah. Um, so that like, I'm going to zoom in right here. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> So right here is a needle that comes down. Uh -huh. and there is a solution in here that is pushed out through the syringe pump that is controlled by the, the, the printer. And it goes through the needle and it goes in a Petri dish. And the Petri dish has a solution that cures it and hardens it. 
um, so that it um, holds its shape. And then what you can do is you can seed that with cells. So you can form tissues that you can then do testing on. So a lot of people, there's like 3D printed mouse hearts and 3D printed thyroids. And you can also 3D print things like bones and um, other um, calcium containing um, body parts. And so then you can seed those with bone cells so that you can um, replace injuries and things like that. You connect the cells by using this deal. Say that again. So you connect the cells using that gel, kind of. So either you can put the cells, you can put the cells in the liquid and it'll print it, or you can print a scaffold. Say you wanted to print like a some skin, you could print something that would resemble the skin, and then you could dump a whole bunch of cells on it, and it would seed and grow in the way that you wanted it to grow. Like a mold, right? Okay. Yeah, a little bit like that. Okay. I also have seen. Three D printing. Have you heard about that? Say that again. I also have heard about bacterial three D printing. Are like using bacteria to make biofilms? Yeah, I've there's a there's a couple of people here at my university that do that as well. Um, but bacteria aren't as compatible with humans, and so that's why I wanted to do bioprinting. Yeah, it's also bio, but it's different application. Yeah. That's very cool. Thank you very much, Drew. Um, I think are we left? Just Thomas didn't say things about his project yet, or no, no, no. I didn't see there anybody anything. else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. So I think you're the last one, right? Ah, really? For this? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So yeah, please, by all means, tell us about your. Okay. Um... Okay, uh, welcome to the Wala team, so Cameroon team. We were supposed to build um, a shake incubator that uh, advised us to start uh, with uh, incubator, so one device and then the, another one. So uh, we build firstly, I will show you the, the, the picture of my camera. We, we build the uh, incubator. <laughs> So this is, uh, I don't know. Okay, this is our incubator. Are you able to see it? Yes. So are you able to see it very well? Yes. Yes. Okay, so this is uh, our incubator. And uh, we decide to do it. <laughs> with uh, local uh, material and uh, what I saw said to go here. So, and uh, our incubator works very well because as you can see, actually we have uh, some uh, solution inside. I don't know if you are able to see, but we have something inside working uh, uh, very well. And uh, our great success was uh, we uh, uh, four days ago we succeeded to do, uh, to do a, a transformation of Esherisha uh, Kuli. So we do uh, a competent cells with Esherisha of Esherisha Kuli with uh, uh, incubator. So we are very happy about uh, our incubator, but we decide to not stop <laughs> at this level because our first idea was to build the uh, Shaker incubator. So we, <laughs> since we are very so, sure that our incubator is, is working well, so actually we are working uh, to build the, the shaker. So this is uh, uh, some plan of uh, our shaker here. So we, we went, we, we take uh, the Godzilla plan and we try to adapt it. So actually we are working on uh, the shaker incubator and then we will put the shaker on inside our incubator and uh, see <laughs> how our shaker incubator can work uh, very, uh, can work together. Uh, we will use uh, the same Arduino 
to control the seeker and the incubator. So um, what I learned from uh, this process, really, I, I really learned the interdisciplinary works because I put together pupil engineer and um, biologists and they succeed to, to, to build uh, this incubator and this shaker. They never worked before together and they was very happy so actually they don't want to stop so i was um due to this project i discovered or the team we discovered that there is a, a, a electronic shops here in yaoundé so actually all what we need or we didn't uh, order something from um, overseas we buy all here, we work all here in Cameroon. So <coughs> that is uh, <laughs> that is uh, what we are doing. And also uh, for the future, so uh, because two days ago we received a visit of uh, Catholic universities and they see our incubator. So actually they are planning to collaborate with us. If you can work with uh, local material for uh, local equipment for the molecular biology labs in such a way that many students can use it in, in their labs. So I guess uh, by the next year, the plan is to they give us one year to try to build uh, this kind of uh, uh, local equipment uh, used in molecular biology in such a way that Every student can, each student can afford it uh, easily. So, uh, thank you. That is great, Thomas. Thank you very much. Um, okay. It's cool that you guys got, um, how do you call it? How did you say a transformation done, yeah? Yes. Uh, it's a nice benchmark. Competent sense. So we did transformation. So okay. Isherisha, we transformed Isherisha Koli in a competent cell. So actually they are able to, to take um, gene insight. Cool. Anybody else has a comment or a question? No? <laughs> so I, I have Grace, I see. I have is, it, is it in a shaker? In Sorry, incubator, oh, incubator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so somebody had a question. I don't, I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I was wondering, uh, very nice, uh, thank you. I was wondering the ration temperature you put uh, uh, with your incubator. Which temperature can you have? Uh, I, <laughs> hello, <laughs> hello. Yeah. Yes, I didn't get the question very well. Is I was asking, I was asking about the temperature you can have okay. in your incubator. Okay, so that the as you can see here, I don't know if you are able to see, but you have. Are you able to see the number? No, no. we're not able. So sorry, oh, Thomas. No, we see. no, no. It's uh because there is light coming from the back of the display. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay, in fact, there is two temperatures. So you can set the desired temperature mm -hmm. between, uh, between 20 and 80. Okay. And then, I the I? I didn't get it. So you can, you can set up the desired temperature. Like a Sherisha oh. Kuli, the optimal temperature for a Sherisha Kuli is 37 degrees. Ah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you can fix your temperature at 37 degrees and uh, let the, the bulb inside the uh, incubator uh, uh, rise the temperature at this uh, 37 degrees. Yeah. And then the temperature will stay constant. Okay, good. Uh, constant. So if you have like, uh, if you have uh, 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 Bacteria, bacteria for if you want to do like fermentation or natural yogurt, the lactobacillus grow mostly at 45 degrees. So you can set up your temperature at 45 degrees, mm -hmm. 
and then the bulb will rise the temperature until this uh, uh, temperature and keep it uh, constant during all the fermentation process or all the growing process. Yeah. And uh, can you mind also that yeah. the chicken because to grow it in order to don't, the cells don't precipitate to the bottom if they are thick. That's why you need the shaker, no? Yeah. I, I didn't get you. I didn't get you. Sorry. No, I just was commenting that uh, it's good that you have the shaker because if you are growing cells, then they precipitate if you don't rotate them. Yes, yes. That is why we we just we decide to continue. We need the shaker to yeah. to uh, to shake this uh, preparation of this beer. Good, good. Yeah. Hi. Uh, hi, Thomas. We oui, yes. <laughs> Yeah, so this Harry, uh, I guess, so uh, thumbs up. I think uh, it was a very inspiring project, uh, seeing that you have actually built this to finish and uh, you have actually tested it out. So I think this is a very cool project. Uh, we in Ghana would equally like to build a similar thing here. So it's very good. Uh, one other, one question I, that I really want to ask is uh, about, uh, quality control within the system because usually for uh, open source hardware people usually question question what is the the quality assurance that when you use it it you can compare it is comparable to the commercial one did, did you like perform some experiment like you said you have done uh, transformation with equal life like do you have like data somewhere so that when other groups of people anywhere, like the Ghana team, decides to do this, we can compare our results to yours. Okay. It would be in, good in to fact, have some, yeah. In fact, regarding incubator, the, the, you build a simple incubator with uh, con controlling just one parameter. This parameter is temperature. Okay. So in okay. terms of uh, <laughs> just want to follow temperature here, yeah? uh, but uh, regarding uh, so, like uh, for the transformation, we can see uh, quality of uh, our manipulation or our transformation in another stage because we calculate the efficiency of our transformation. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't. Uh, it's not related to the the. How can I say? It's not related to the the incubator. You know. Okay. But for example, for for natural yogurt for fermentation, I really want to okay. build uh, another device called Kusamto. But in, okay. this, in this incubator, aside temperature, I decide to add a pH, a pH meter. Okay. Because for example, the natural uh, for the yogurt, the pH, the right pH is at between 4.5 and 5. So okay. at this level, I can control the pH on the at the Yahoo and do a calorie control uh, from okay. the incubator. So that is uh, okay. so that is the nuance. Right. Sorry, thanks, Thomas. Um, sorry, guys, to cut you short, but again, uh, in the interest of time and because I think people are still busy, some of them in the middle of the day, some of them want to actually go home. Um, I'm gonna well, sorry to stop this conversation here, but again. By all means, use the Slack channel, use the repositories, use every means of communication that you can to keep these conversations going, right? It will be very nice to see the things that were developed in Cameroon, replicated in Ghana, in the Netherlands, whatever, right? So that we can further improve these this designs. This would be wonderful. Um, I would like to bring this to the final moment by thanking everybody again for their time and their effort and for taking the time today again to show the, the projects. It was very, very nice to see um, the things you've learned, the things you mentioned were interesting and important. Some of them I had no idea. Um, thanks a lot. None of this would be possible without all of your efforts and help. Um, and I hope we keep uh, doing things like this in the future. And from my side, I need a little bit of time to put some things together so that we can more or less do a follow on to this. So basically just a little survey where people um, say what was nice, what wasn't, what we can improve. And then maybe we can organize something later where 
we try to collaboratively put things together to see how to bring this idea forward if this is something that is interesting for you okay so other than that if there are are there any other comments or suggestions or anything like that thanks andre we really appreciated it thanks yeah just one last shout out uh andre we need <laughs> come on it was very nice meeting you all guys really Thank you. Very nice meeting you, everyone. Yeah, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice meeting you. Thank you. Excellent work, everyone. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks to you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you as well. Thank you very much. Stay in touch. Yeah. Goodbye.